Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 3 Take, where we talk all things Major League Baseball. Here's Kyle Corwin and Nate Reyes. It all starts right now. Ooh, welcome back to the 3 Take, presented by SeatGeek. This is episode 375. I'll be your host, Kyle Corwin. I'm here with my co-host, Nate Reyes. Nate. Hello. Hi. Hello. I would love to take like the, is it the mean? Is it the average, the median of our, I, I tapered off with math about middle school. After that, it was just a mess. Sure. So I, I couldn't tell you. Take the average of our Monday mm-hmm. vibes. Yeah. And our Thursday vibes. Yeah. Do a little compare and contrast of the 375 that we've done. I I think, look, I mean, we're we're just like everyone else. Yeah. I think if you take the vibes of the median, mean, middle, average, average. of everyone's vibe from Monday to Thursday, I think you'll see, <laughs> you'll see a big difference. Does the, well... I say that this could be considered a little bit different of a Monday across baseball. We're, right. we're on the eve of the trade deadline. Does that does that do anything for you, or does the fact that you told me before we got on to this very recording that the Yankees should just sell everyone play into the fact that maybe this trade line this trade deadline doesn't do it uh, do it for you? I'm just gonna get this out of the way because no one, uh, no one wants right. to Let, talk or listen about the Yankees. So, and that's fair, understandable. Sure. Uh, it's done. This is done. I said it last episode. This weekend was was it. It was it was gonna define what the rest of the season was gonna look like because it was gonna define what the trade deadline was gonna look like. And. Once again, you see Yankees front office sitting back and letting guys go places that probably would have helped the Yankees quite a bit. And they're just sitting back. Meanwhile, I said, you need two out of three against the O's. If you lose two out of three, but you're going down swinging, I understand. Yesterday, Sunday, was a joke. It was a joke. Season on the line, in my mind. Severino. Is it? He looks oh, okay. That's whoever's running the yeah, soundboard who's, needs who's to who's doing chill. That? Severino's trash. Come on now. Severino's done. And when you look at like a eight ERA, I think I saw something the other day through fifteen starts. It is the worst ERA in the history of any Yankee starter. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All so, right. yo, done. chill on the soundboard, please. That's all I'm asking. Done. Come on. Show some respect. Done. Done. Aaron Judge sits. That's the message you put out. You're you're playing against the the best team in the division. You're fighting for a chance before a deadline deal. And your captain who says he's healthy enough to play Has to sit out in a must-win game. The immediate six runs in the first inning, just a punch in the face. It was done. You laid down. What was it? So I'm over it. Was it six before the first out had been recorded, and then something like that? Seven on the inning. Something like that. I don't know. Yikes! It's just bad, dude. So like it again. Like I, I just I don't understand. I'm I'm very confused. So why buy? Why buy anybody? You mentioned that we've heard reports them being interested in Dylan Carlson. Who cares? Why? For what? Sell everyone. I don't understand. Sell Glaber. Sell Luis Severino. Sell Clay Holmes. Sell Aaron Judge. No. But it is what it is, dude. I don't, I don't know. I got nothing left. I'm all done. I'm all out. Yankees are done. The season's over. And it's not like a... Dude, I I'm you. sorry. I, I'm I hate sorry. you. I'm I hope sorry. you know I hate I, you. It's not me. I, oh, I'm sorry. Hate. 
This is full on hate. I'm sorry. I don't know how long doing this, this lasts. I'm looking at the soundboard right now and it says there's another 20 seconds of this, but I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to call it. That was, that I was rude. You. Yep. I hate you. No, that was, um, come on. Yeah, dude. All done. All done. And that's not like me being like a dramatic thing. This is me. Like, I think I realistically held on as long as I could. I think you, yeah, I think you held on a, a very respectable amount. Yeah. Now it's just, it's dead. Season's done. Whatever this organization is doing is, is it, there needs to be an extreme change of direction. Testing my patience today. That wasn't even a relevant I don't sound think it effect. Was at all. So yeah. we I don't must be bugging out. I don't know what's going on. Let's get these vibes back up, shall we? It, you you look like you need to pick me up. I need to pick me up. I could have got through that 90 seconds quicker. Sooner. I think we all need to pick me up after yeah. after this weekend. Was it hey before we serious question before we get into the weekend series results news and notes uh was it any cooler out there this weekend it was cooler out here like at uh, least yesterday maybe the day before I was just curious no uh, no I mean one after 105 it's all the same you just don't go out there man I uh, sorry I was trying to find some positivity there and came up empty. So, with that said, let's uh let's get into the weekend series results. Blue Jays over the Angels. Look. This was my weekend series to watch, if you recall. Um I said I want to see how the Angels respond in their first full series after declaring that they're holding on to Shohei. They dropped the series, but I was able to watch. It wasn't like sure you would have loved to have gone up there and and, and gotten the series dub, but it it wasn't anything that would warrant like raising any alarms or anything. Like sure, uh, with runners in scoring position yesterday, I think they were like one for six thousand. But it was one game, you know. It it happens. Uh, but they did they did get the the win on Sunday in spite of that. Um, Springer, however, have you, have you heard about George Springer? I've heard of him, but have you heard about him as of late? Not doing, uh, George Springer things finish a day over five on Sunday and is now hitless in his last 29 ABs. Uh, cool. cool. Pi- Pirates over the Phillies. Pirates dropped the Phillies on Sunday with a walk-off home run from Josh Palacios to clinch the series. By the way, first Pirates player to hit a walk-off home run on his birthday. I find that a little hard to believe. I mean, the Pirates have been around for a minute. You're telling me not a single guy has hit weird. a walk-off on his birthday? Not a ton of dubs happening lately. But fair. I didn't. I saw the celebration. I, it didn't fire me up that much. I felt like I think the guy that hits the home run, I don't think he should be more excited than than the rest of his teammates. And that's yeah, that's what not it a good look. Like, did you notice that? I did. Yeah, it's not a good look. Brian Reynolds just like standing there waiting for a high five for forty five seconds, not moving. All not right, smiling. Let's it get these weird. vibes up. Let's get this these vibes weird. up. Come on. Let's see. All right. Let's see which of these series will get the vibes up. Oh, I I know one that I know one that'll get the vibes up for Nate. Not this one. Braves sweep the Brewers. Braves scored. 29 runs to knock the Brewers to second in the Central. Uh, 29 runs over the course of the weekend, of course. Sure. Uh, Mets take three of four from the Nationals. Justin Verlander gets his 250th career win on Sunday. Marlins over the Tigers. The series win was the Marlins' first since the All-Star break. The Marlins uh, came out of the break and lost eight straight. Uh, But they have since won four of their last six, so... Things maybe turn around in Miami a little bit. Uh, Rays over the Astros. Astros scored 22 runs in the series, including 17 in Saturday's win, but dropped Sunday's rubber match mm. by a score of 8-2. to two. Mm. That Saturday game... Slugfest, dude. Well, purely for the, um, for the Astros. I... Are we worried about are we worried about the Rays? I, I've been saying this since March. 
I've been saying this the whole time. I mean, Everyone was freaking out about the first two months being like, oh, the Raiders going to win 120 games. Shut up. That's not what this team does. I did hear, I heard a take on MLB Network today. They were talking about it, and I, it may have been, was it Joel Sherman? He, if it wasn't, I apologize, Joel, but I believe it was Joel, and he was talking about, he's like, you know, the Razor team, like you were just saying, Nate, he was like, the Razor team where at the start of the season, we're asking if they're going to win 110 games. Now mm-hmm. we're wondering if they're going to miss out on one of the three wild card spots. I'm like, Joel, Joel. Joel. Chill, chill, come, chill. come on, I'm dude. I'm not saying that. Yeah. Like, we're not, we're just saying they're not going to be setting any win total records this year. But, right. like, let's, let's, you know, pump the bricks. Yeah. Just a tad, Joel. That's what uh, I was trying to say. I've been saying this. Like, like, the Rays are good, but they're not. Sorry. They're not what you think they're going to be. Like, it's, it's, it's kind of like the Yankees last year. You remember, like, the Yankees took off last year and they were, like, dominant for, like, 60, 70 games. And then, you know, kind of fell back down to earth. So that's why baseball is a long season. Um, And I don't know. It's just, like, the the Rays, to me, they, they don't have a lot of depth. You know, they don't have a lot of depth. So I think they got it. They got to make some moves today, right? Today yeah. and tomorrow, they got to today and tomorrow fill in some cracks. Which perfect reminder, I don't. I know people listening that have been listening to us for years know what I'm about to say. I don't like having to say this every episode this time of the year, but yeah. it's it's worth repeating. We're at that point in the year where trades could go down during the recording. Trades could go down five minutes after the recording. Trades could go down. Later tonight, and then people will get around to listen to the episode. They're like, bro, how did you not include this blockbuster deal for Charlie Charlie Culbertson as a free agent for Shohei Otani? I'm like, well, I, I don't know. That, first of all, didn't happen. What a but deal. But second of all, there's nothing that we can do once we hit stop on the recording. Like, once we do, that's it. Like, if it happens 30 seconds or... 30 hours after the recording. Nothing There's only do so much it. she can do. Sorry about it. Um, where are we at here? Oh, this was the this was the series that I, I think I think they'll get to vibes up. This one? The Royals. The Royals sweep the twins. Love that. The fraudulent twins. Uh, I love it. Sweep that fraudulent organization, Royals. The twins were outscored 20 to 13 by. Let me check here. Stand by. Just a little check. Yes, still the second worst team in baseball. So, you know, you got the Twins out here trying to hang on to first in the division. By the way, they're a game over 500. Trying to stave (laughs) off the Guardians who are at 500 in second place. They're only half a game back. And then you go out and get swept by the Royals. Like... Look, a season's not made or broken in a single series, but this one this one was awfully telling. Uh the Guardians split a four gamer with the White Sox. Terry Francona Terry Francona gets his 1927th win on Sunday, breaking a tie with Casey Stengel for 13th all time. I would say he's that's among, pretty good. Yeah, I'd say he's among elite company. Yeah, old Tito. Uh, Cubs take three or four from the Cardinals. Cubs win eight straight before dropping the series finale to the Cardinals on Sunday. Uh, A's over the Rockies. I have nothing to say about that series. Giants over the Red Sox. Giants walk off in back-to-back games to take the series. Hmm. Uh, First home series win against the Red Sox since 2004. Whoa. I think we all remember what happened in 2004. So if you're a Red Sox fan like myself, maybe you're a little, maybe you're okay with this happening. Yeah, that's true. Just something to think about. This is all in the vein of me just trying to find good thoughts, good vibes. Yeah, silver linings. Spin zone here. Uh, Yeah, silver linings. Reds over the Dodgers. Reds claim sole possession of first place in the National League Central. Reds 
Uh, it's worth noting the Reds won their home and road series against the Dodgers this year. So yeah, that's big time. Good for the Reds. Mariners over the D-backs. D-backs fall to. I don't want to say it. After all the after all the I know hyping up we were doing in the D-backs. I know. Oh, this is the team we're going to ride with in the second half. I don't think anybody's riding with the D-backs at this point in time. What the heck, man? I'm not jumping off yet, but like. It's getting a little. We're going to have to clean up our act a little bit out there. and Yeah. It's... Out there in Phoenix. D-backs fall to 7 and 16 in the month of July. Mm, mm, mm. Another, uh, another outcome that might surprise you. The Padres swept the Rangers. That is pretty surprising. So, was it last week? I believe it was last week where I said I'm, I'm about to Mets the Padres. They said, "Okay, we heard you loud and clear. Just do it." it There's still two games under 500. Met them. Met them up. You've been meted. You've been meted. Padres' current three-game win streak. For I tell you what, for a team that both of us had in the had winning the World Series, mm-hmm. the fact that their current three game win streak matches their season best does not do that argument any favors at all. I don't want to talk about that anymore. I don't think we should bring it up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's it. That's it. That's, that's so the last ugly. time I'm bringing it up. That's, so that's the last ugly. time I'm bringing it up. If you want to, if you want to roast us about our Padres take, you're gonna have to dig up the the receipts from back in get through the archives back in February March because you're not hearing it from us anymore. All right. Uh, and lastly, here as Nate alluded to, uh, Orioles over the Yankees. Orioles walk off the Yankees on Friday by a score, I believe, of one to nothing. Correct? Santander walk off. Well, it was a heck of a game. One nothing, right? Heck of a game. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's impressive. Uh, and then they take the rubber match in convincing fashion on Sunday night baseball to take the series. Um, all right, let's get into some trades. Let's do it. You want to start with uh, you want to start with the big one? You know, I have a pro. I, I'll be honest with you. I have a I have a problem calling this the big one. And like you texted me before we got on, and you're like, "What? Uh, like, is there a move in particular you want to kind of?" make the the headliner or is there anything in particular you want to focus on and i'll be honest it took me a second to think i'm like max scherzer i guess yeah it but doesn't I, feel that spicy does i it? don't i i really don't like maybe prior to this year sure but I, have we finally reached the point in time with max scherzer where it's just it's losing its luster a little bit. Not to take anything away from his career, but at this point in time, this version, this current version of Max Scherzer, does it, I don't know if it warrants the same kind of attention. I mean, it based on what we've seen since our last recording, I think by default he's going to be our, our headliner, sure. But I don't know, man. Uh... In Mike Maddox, I I believe, I think. Fair. Um, I think he's just like he's a wizard when it comes to pitchers. I would go ahead and assume the pitch clock is really kind of messed with Max. I mean, he was complaining about it the most. I feel like he was the loudest about it. You know, we talked about it all, all spring training and... It's tough, man. Like when you have a Hall of Fame career in your way, like you've been doing it your way, and then for that way to be altered, yeah, it makes sense. I I think I think the Mets are smart for moving them. Yeah, I agree. Because like we talked about the age, like maybe there is just like we're at that point with decline. Um. I, honestly, I like the I like it on both sides. Like I like the Rangers saying like, well, you know, we have the best pitching coach in baseball. Let's bring him in and see if we can squeeze something out of him. And at like worst case scenario, you still have a lot of depth. You look at the rotation when healthy, like Evaldi's going to come back. Dane Dunning has, has looked really good. The timing with Evaldi certainly 
th- this move certainly helped with that with that news for like, sure. Rega- regardless how we feel about Scherzer, don't have to rush this back. first half. Yeah. yeah, like get get right before you're coming back. Um, we're gonna talk about it here in a sec. But Jordan Montgomery coming in, and then like you have this fifth spot that you could just rotate through guys: Andrew Heaney, John Gray, Martin Perez. Like what? It's it's your call. Like talk about depth, dude. Talk about think about the postseason and having like one of those guys fall into like that long relief role, you know, where if you're wanting to bring back a Scherzer or an Eovaldi on short days of rest, it's just like they they're doing the right stuff. And you have like a a safety net. If one of those guys like Martin Perez looks like he's not what he was. Started the year off good, I think, and then just kind of yeah, yeah, fizzled. Same with Heaney. John Gray's looked off and on, but pretty good. Yeah, dude, you just have options, and you have depth, and you have like the ability to manage innings the rest of the way out. So, I don't, I don't mind it, but yeah, I think the Mets are smart for moving on from Scherzer. Um, and it was like an excellent point of what they were talking about on MLB Network. I think like, yes, it's an underwhelming year. Yes, it's a disappointing year for the Mets. But for Cohen, like he's trying to, he spent all this money, which he doesn't care about. Like it's a loss, whatever. You know, you spend the payroll, you don't get it. I don't think he cares as much as everyone else cares. But you get li- little Acuna. In the deal. Yeah. Little bro Acuna is raking and said to have a similar skill set. So it's like you sign this guy, you spend a ton of money, and you're you're getting farm back. So I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I think it's something that could pan out in a few years. And you know, honestly, good on Steve Cohen and the front office as a whole, whoever else is involved in this decision, I'm sure it's not just one or two people, but you know, good on them for like as much as, as much as we hate on the Mets for just the way they get in their own way all the time. Yeah. We're looking at other teams around the league that we're like pseudo fans of where we're looking at the way they handle moves like this or personnel like this. And they, we talk about it with the Yankees, maybe even the Padres. Time will tell. The fact that Steve Cohen can look at a guy like Max Scherzer and be like, you know what? I invested a lot into this guy. Didn't mm-hmm. pan out. Yeah. On to the next one. Yeah. Like, good for the Mets for being right. able to pull that trigger instead of just, like, sitting on it and be like, well, let's just take, you know, this year. This just wasn't our year. Like, the division was was a challenge. Let's see if we can try our luck again next year with this same court. Like, no good on the Mets for getting them out and getting what you could in return for them. Yeah. And like the amount of money he has as a Mets fan, you got, I think you got to have some relief in being like, Hey, like they're going to do this every year. They're going to spend money every year. Right. Doesn't right. work. Cool. Doesn't work. Move on. And then like, if you continue to do this with free agents and if you're willing to pay top dollar for it, this is the safety net, right? You have an off year. You sell those pieces. You get farm. Farm's getting built. So you see with the Dodgers, right? Like the Dodgers do that. Spend a ton of free agent money. Build the farm. Something's going to pan out, right? Either those old guys at the big league level are going to get it done or your farm's going to grow. And then you have pieces to move or you have pieces to build and bring up. I think it's smart business. Speaking of business, the Rangers will pay Scherzer $22.5 million. Uh, he did opt in to the 2024 season, by the way, like a, mm-hmm. as a part of Saw this uh, this agreement. And so the, pay, the Rangers will pay $22.5 and the Mets will cover more than $35 million of the remaining terms. Yeah, Rangers side of things, good good job. Like, why not? 
looking like, I, well, I hate to call it like a buy low scenario because we're talking about Max Scherzer here, but like, I don't know, like yeah. given, given Scherzer's career, is it, could you consider this like a buy low situation where like you're saying, bring him over, bring, get him and Mike Maddox in the same room and say, let's see if we can, we can tap into that vintage Scherzer a little bit. I want to see. I'm trying to see what do you have by chance where little Acuna ranks amongst amongst um, prospects like in the top 100 if he is in the top 100 it's I, I saw that it's the Rangers third was their third top prospect yeah he'll be third I ranked. mean he'll be among the top for New York he was he was playing in double a was hitting 315 with seven bombs 51 ribbies and had 42 42 stolen bases in 82 Good games Lord yeah, that bro. sounds very, That's... very uh, Ronald esque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say that's a little bit of a buy low, I guess. Like if Max was having a good year, I don't think he'd go one for one. Right, uh, which is what I'm saying. Like the price and, tag is much and have higher. Have the contract eaten? You yeah. know. Yeah, which is my point. Like you're you're getting them. For a one for one, yeah, eating a little bit of the contract, but like the the price tag is a lot higher if he's having right. You could say anywhere like remotely close to what he's capable of. Looking at the last two years though with the Mets for Scherzer, 2022, he was eleven and five. Uh to this point, leading up to the trade was nine and four. Twenty twenty two ERA was two two nine. This year he's got a four oh one. Uh, he had thrown uh, 145 and a third last year, uh, up to 107 and two thirds. His K per nine are down from a 10.7 to a 10.1. Whip is up from a 0.91 to a 1.19. And home runs allowed, I believe, league leading. Uh, last year was 13, is up to 23. So yeah, I don't know, man, like if you're the Rangers, like it's in there and just keep continue to feed the fire, right? Feed the hype. So I'm all right. You, with it. you think Rangers fans are excited about this? Like genuine question. I'm not trying to be like facetious. Like do you, when you, if you're a Rangers fan and you see this news come through, like, sure. You're not like, you're not like angry. You're not like, why did we get this guy? Yeah. But are you like, is, is there any, like level of hype there if you're a Rangers fan or are you just looking at this as like a wait and see kind of deal if DeGrom would have stayed healthy you know but I think yeah. there's probably yeah. a little bit yeah. of like this reluctancy to to fully hop on the excitement train sure it's like a cautious excitement I like that yeah cautious yeah. excitement that's fair but I mean, the um, team's good enough to to where like it, even if even if you continue to get this Max Scherzer, like this year's version of Max Scherzer, I think you're still okay. Because you're not bringing him in without. as like the ace, right? Like you're you're bringing him in like, arguably as a number two. I mean, if you have to, if if things just plummet for Max Scherzer, if you have to drop him to like. Your number five starter, worst case, right? You still have Max Scherzer as your number five starter. That's not yeah. going to happen. But like, just think of like, think of the worst possible scenario with Max Scherzer, and it's still you're you're probably still going to be able to salvage, yeah, whatever you're pushing for. Bro knows how to pitch in the postseason too. So, well, minus last yeah. last year against the Padres, but yeah. yeah. That's just, I think that's just the Mets. Getting away from that organization has to be good for the psyche. That'll help anybody. Speaking of which, no no trade uh, news to report on, but on that note, before we move on, Justin Verlander, 
wanting to hear from the front office what their goal is for next year before he Mm kind of decides how open he is or how not open he is to a trade. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Tough for that report to become public. Yeah. You know, but you would, you would hope that that statement would stay behind closed doors. But I agree. I don't disagree with what he's saying. You know, like I came here with this goal in mind. Now you're selling. Let me just check in. Are you guys, I mean, what do you think? Then that goes back to my last statement. Like, I don't think, I don't think Cohen is just going to willingly rebuild in his second year with the team. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, Billy Epler came out and said, this isn't a rebuild, which I, again, hate the Mets, but I can agree with that statement. Like you shipping off half of a season of, of, or the remainder of the season of Max Scherzer. Yeah. Like you're not, you're not really losing out anything there. And right. 2024 Max Scherzer as well, but like you, you're okay. Like it, if he does, if he pitches well for you, that's great. But like what you are getting from him this year, if you decide that at this point in time, that it's better to just go your separate ways, you're still going to be okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. There, the, all the upside is, there is with the Rangers. Like at the like we just talked about, if the Rangers can get like any semblance of vintage Max Scherzer, then they're in a great spot. But like what he was doing for the Mets, and it didn't really seem like there was any signs pointing to him turning it around. Right. Then you got a You're, top five prospect in return. Yeah. That so it, from what it sounds like, they'd be willing to move if if the roles are reversed next year, if they're in a buying situation at the deadline. Now they have prospects to move. I, I, yeah. I mean, I think if you're Justin Verlander, like I, I like the conversation. I, I can respect the conversation. Would have appreciated it to stay out of the news. But at the same time, you got to be like, yeah, the Stevie Cohen's going to do what Stevie Cohen needs to do. You know, he's he's going to be in the same position. He's probably going to go wild on free agents this off season too. Yeah, I mean, I th- I think if if you're a Mets fan and you and you think about this situation for like more than half a second, you can assume that Steve Cohen and company would like to compete next year and contend, but because this is now this conversation has become public, this stance from Verlander has become public. Yeah. Now it puts that like public pressure on you. Yeah, for sure. To where it's like, okay, well now. Like we're the Mets, we've spent all this money. We can't just say like, well, we're gonna be like, we're gonna test the waters a little bit, see how it goes next year. Now you yeah. essentially have to come out and be like, well, we're the Mets, we're gonna compete every year, blah blah blah. So I don't know. Do you think he stays? Um. Yeah, I don't know, man. Watching some of the the post game pressers with Scherzer, he he just looked like he was fed up. Like he yeah. he just it didn't seem like. I mean, I can't speak to when he first signed the deal and, and like last year uh, or when he, he got sent over and he was throwing well. I can't speak to that. But like recently, as the struggles have continued to mount up a little bit, it's just becoming more apparent that like this was not the place that he wanted to be. Uh, Verlander, however, seems a little bit more open to like I've, I've heard the words committed, thrown around, mm-hmm. championship, blah, blah, blah. So I think I would say the percentage like b- before the Scherzer deal, if you were to ask like who's more likely to stay at, like personally between the two, I think Ver like if you were to ask both of them, I think Verlander is going to tell you like yeah, like yeah, I- I'll be more inclined to stick around. I just need to have yeah. the right conversations, hear the right kind of things, and I think come August second, again this could change in the next twenty four hours, but I-, I I think he'll still be there. Me too. Me too. You got plenty uh, of other dudes like Tommy Pham and and uh crap, what's his name? Why am I forgetting it? Former A, left fielder, Mark Hanna. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sarlon Marte. Move those guys. You got pieces. You can get you can get something back. Let your young guys come up, play. Get the get the fan base excited about what your future may hold. With mm-hmm. the younger guys, like it, let go a buck this off season, 
that's coming, right? I mean, I think we, yeah, Buck's gonna go. Yeah, not necessarily Start because over. of like because it's any one fault of his necessarily. I no, think it doesn't doesn't work. It, doesn't he's do. just the next victim of the machine? Where it's yeah. like, hey, look, man, we respect what you've done. We gave it a shot, but. This Didn't isn't work. the fit. We're Clean slate, start one. over. And like, uh, how many, how many fans? And I get like the frustration of Mets fans for it being forever since they've won. But like, how many fan bases would kill for this situation? For a team that would clean slate, willing sure. to assess in the middle of the season, and then clean slate in the off season. I think that's what they're gonna do. Yeah. Um. We touched on a little bit. Jordan Montgomery, uh, he's coming over to Texas, as well as uh, reliever Chris Stratton from the Cardinals. Um, yeah, just talking more about adding adding depth. Yeah, at the arm level, um, he was probably of like the non big names, a la Scherzer, Verlander, guys yeah. like that. He's probably one of the, would would you say was probably one of the more desired arms that were available that was within reason for a yeah. larger plethora of teams. Yeah, yeah, because it's depth and it's like proven depth. You know, it's affordable depth too. Yeah, true. So I like it. I mean, I um. You know, I got to watch Mon- Monty quite a bit being a Yankee, but yeah, it's just one of those guys that'll, I, I don't know. I mean, it, you could, you could hate him. He could give you a couple of performances where you're like, what is this? And then sometimes he'll go out there and dice, but that's kind of what you have for a three, four starter. That's, that's what it is. That's what every three, four starter is. You're not going to have five dominant arms. You're going to have guys that are a little bit of a question mark at times. And for the limited options out there, yeah, this was a good move. I know it's I know it's kind of a silly approach to thinking about things this way, but like every year that I play fantasy baseball, I get more into the mindset of when it comes time to the deadline, thinking about like what would this look like on a fantasy game log like is jordan montgomery going to be the t- which i think he will is jordan Mon- jordan montgomery is going to be the guy that he he could go out there and give you 20 25 points maybe back-to-back starts but then that third start he's going to give you like a negative 10 negative 15 just because he true. doesn't have it that day true so that's what you're getting from you get a guy like sometimes. jordan montgomery but yeah be- like we talked about because they have they're adding they're adding that depth you can afford you can afford an outing like that from time to time, but he's going to give you those good starts more than likely that uh, will help you get to where you're going to uh, Lance Lynn and Joe Kelly heading to the Dodgers while well, Joe Kelly returning to the Dodgers, which I have to say, I saw his uh, re debut for the Dodgers, if you will. And it just felt right. Like, disregard disregard like the the performance itself i'm saying just like the the vibes in the park the the entrance in it just felt right isn't it funny how like lance lynn seemed to be like the headliner name to that deal and joe kelly was the afterthought but it's funny that like angels fans in my mind are more excited about i could be wrong but it seems like they're more yeah dodgers fans more excited about Joe Kelly than Lance Lynn. The combo, I would say the combo of Kike and, and Joe Kelly. Yeah. Probably more exciting for Dodgers fans than yeah. than your headliner. Which yeah. I mean, I could understand. I, I think a lot of the talk around Lance Lynn at the deadline was very much like heavily based in what he has in there what he's capable of doing mm, and yeah. less of what he's cuz we've seen it. Did like we just year, we just saw like 17 strikeouts from him not too yeah, not too long ago. It's been a weird first half for Lance Lynn, but like all in all has not had a great 
uh, first half and some change. No. So I can understand why maybe the excitement isn't fully there for, for Dodgers fans. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you needed you needed rotation help. And mm-hmm. if he gives you, like like we just talked about, if he gives you, like, those Montgomery-esque numbers, a couple good starts here and there, maybe you have to yeah. bite the bullet on a, on a bad outing occasionally. I mean, that's that's pitching. That's baseball. But I think if he can tap into if, – if he can channel what was being said about him in terms of the market as we approached that trade happening, which all in all, I think we're, we're pretty good things said about him, what he's capable of doing. If he can channel that, Dodgers would be in a good spot with that uh, rotation help. So They're not done though, right? I know there's not like a ton of arms out there to go and get, but I don't think they're done. I I can see like a just just a, a buy low scenario with Jack Flaherty too, like the same yeah, yeah same mentality Lance Lynn like hey maybe we can change him, you know it's like those relationships like when women are like I can change him I can fix him, I think that's the way the Dodgers are gonna look at it go go get Jack Flaherty, bring him in change one of the two and I would consider that a successful deadline. I think that was actually, I was trying to rack my brain like right as I hit record because I wanted to off the top share the name that I thought could potentially go either like during this recording or like maybe mm-hmm. a couple hours following. Yeah. And I, I feel like that could be, he could be a guy that goes today. I like it. Cause it's not like, it's not. It's not so big of a name that you got to run this right up to like the the final seconds of the deadline. Mm-hmm. But it's like big enough to where he made it to the eve of the deadline to where it's like, okay, yeah. there's been a number of conversations going yeah. on. It's time to just pull the trigger on one of these and 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 move on. Yeah, things I I it's limited. Options are limited, you know what I mean? That too. Yeah. Like there's not a ton out there, especially with Cubs no longer selling and, and holding on to Stroman, potentially. Yeah, like you're just there's there's only so many names. So, I it's same thing, dude. Like Jack Flaherty's shown glances, hints, little sprinkles of of good. Yeah, give him a new place. Um. A teammate of Jack Flaherty's, Jordan Hicks, is going to Toronto, I like and that he was move. he was added a day after they put Jordan Romano on the IL. So, a lot of a lot of good timing moves for yeah. for these teams that are that are buying, which I'm a fan of. Yeah, it's not that they're necessarily buying out of. Um, out of abundance or they're trying to just double down, they're being very strategic, I feel mm-hmm. like, with some of these moves. And they're they're filling holes that I mean, it's unfortunate that that some of these injuries are 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 occurring, sure, but like the timing of them, you could argue like couldn't it have been couldn't it have been like better off? I mean it gives you it was- just enough time to pull the trigger on on some uh mid-tier moves yeah i thought it was funny like i got an a little notification update saying yankees are very interested in dylan carlson and jordan hicks not five minutes later blue jays trade for jordan hicks and i'm like yeah. that's just how it goes uh yeah i agree it's good timing get romano back talking about a uh, seven eight nine that could be very very solid um who's the um simber and then uh, Swanson, you mm. know what I mean? There's yeah. some depth yeah. back there. Yeah. So, and that's what you'll need because it, I it doesn't seem like they're able to add to the rotation. But at the same time, like Manoa kind of seems like he's somewhat back. Enough Rios? to be. Yeah. Like th- there's guys that like enough to give you a chance. Everything's got to go right for the Blue Jays in the postseason or coming down the stretch into the postseason. So. I like it. It didn't seem like a super expensive move either. I didn't see who was going in return, but 
Uh, Blue Jays are sending a pair of minor league right-handers to St. Louis. 21-year-old Sam Reberse. How would sure. you spell? How would you say that? R O B B E R S E. Roberse. Reberse. Yeah, I like Reberse. Reberse. Sam Sam Reberse, and 22-year-old Adam Kloffenstein. Eh. I don't know. That's if, a tough one. Yeah, I don't know if that name's got enough juice to stick yeah. around. Let's go Kloffenstein. Yeah, I don't like it. Both double A guys. Reverse was ranked the tenth best prospect in Toronto system before the season. So that's worth noting. Uh Hicks, on the other hand, through at the time of the deal, forty one and two thirds innings had struck out fifty nine and had allowed just two home runs uh with eight saves. And I think we all know this already, but it's worth sharing again. Uh, among pitchers who have thrown at least 40 innings, his 101 mile an hour average fastball is second in the major leagues behind only Minnesota's Johan Duran. Mm. He's got juice. He's got the juice. Uh, another reliever, David Robertson. Or. I'll give him the respect to Zoo closer. Uh, traded to the Marlins. Posted a 205. Yeah, again at the at the time of the deal, a 205 ERA over 44 innings, struck out 48 with 14 saves. Uh, he will now be alongside recent addition Jorge Lopez. I like in a it. move in a move that I was gonna say that I think that I think you like. Yeah, I like it. I like the Marlins doing that. And wasn't the Robertson deal like on Thursday or Friday? E- yeah, I think so. I love it because like I think there's there's like these group group of teams and not sure what they are, not sure like how much they should buy. And you see a lot of these teams probably waiting until like the final hours of the deadline. Yeah. Whereas, you know, Kim Ng and the Marlins were just like, nah, let's go get them now. Like, Early, let's go get yeah. some of these tweener guys that like, you know, there could could have a lot of teams interested. Let's just go get them now. So I'm a fan and I'm hearing reports that they're like really, really, really into Glaber Torres. Yeah. So I think they're trying to get stuff done. I think they're trying to go. So I'm here for it. Let's go Marlins. I mean, it's uh, the butterfly effect is in full effect here because this was the move that really set off Max Scherzer. Like you go back and listen to him, and he was not happy when mm-hmm. when the Mets shipped off Robertson because he's like, "Okay, you're you're sending away our closer." I I wasn't thrilled with that response from Scherzer because I'm like, dude, read the room. Like yeah. this isn't this isn't the you're not Devin Williams in the Brewers clubhouse post Josh Hader trade here. Yeah, like th- yeah. that's not the kind of situation you're in. You guys are toast. The year's over. Your yeah. your front office is already clearly already looking forward uh, or looking ahead rather to next year. Like just save the antics. No, was, like was it Canna's comments? I, I thought he had the best response to it. He's like, well, we should have played better in the first half. So we were buyers instead of sellers. Like that's, that's a man that gets it. That's a man that understands. So yeah. And a thousand percent agree, but it's not like, I mean, nothing against David Robertson. He's been all over the place. You know what I mean? Like he's been in a lot of different clubhouses. So it's not like you're trading, like you said, Josh Hader or Mo, <laughs> like you're, you're trading a guy that has been moved and dealt before. So, right. Right. But yeah, I think it's, I think it's a good ad. For the Marlins. I, I I like what they're doing, dude. I think they're trying stuff. And they're doing stuff on... They're balling on a budget. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kendall Graveman, going back to Houston. A lot of... Uh, I was listening to it on MLB Network today. They made a good point about how... Like, it's been a theme of this deadline. And let me pull up, because I want to make sure I remember. Bringing so, guys back. Yeah, reunions. You got Joe Kelly going to the Do- going back to the Dodgers. You got Kike going back to the Dodgers. You got Randall Grichik going to the Angels. CJ Crone going to the Angels, which we'll get into those. And then Kendall Graveman going back to Houston. So a lot of guys 
returning uh, to their their former clubs. And I would like I would like to think if you're a guy going back and you've got the skill set worthy of being like dealt to a contender, that that would only it would only to me expedite getting the ball moving. Like Mm -hmm. if you're like, if you're the Astros and you're trying to get things going a little bit and you bring back a guy like Kendall Graven, not to say that he's going to be the guy to do it. Yeah. But as the wheels of this train are starting to move, you'd like to think that they're going to start moving a little quicker because there's less of it. There's less of an onboarding process for a guy like this, because he's already familiar with the team. He's already familiar with the guys that are in that clubhouse and you can just start to gel, start to mesh that much, or re-gel, re-mesh that much quicker and, yeah. and get the get the train moving. I don't think they're done. I think they're gonna make a splash. I I, I believe they will. I think they're gonna make a splash. I I I could I could see something juicy for the Astros. I don't know why I feel like a Luis Robert could happen. White report came out today said all White Sox are, which an, a, that was a, a bizarre report to come through. Now all of a sudden after yeah. the weekend, uh, now everybody's on the table apparently. Well, yeah. I don't know. Like this weekend was really going to alter the course of your season. Yeah, like you split a series. It, where you, <laughs> it, like if you got a sweep, were you hanging on to Cease and, and yeah. Robert? Like yeah, uh, exactly. Now we we split. I have yeah. no interest in in protecting these guys anymore. Everybody's yeah. on the table. That I can see. Any sense. I can see Luis going. I hate how much I like that fit. I know. I know. <laughs> like, it bugs uh, me get too. Him, but get him in there with Jordan. Oh, oh boy, baby. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I could, I don't know why. It just seems like that could happen. Also, Lu- Eloy has kind of like heated up since he's been back. I think he's hitting pretty well. I think he's hitting like 270, 280. Had had some occasional bombs mixed in. I can I mean, see him saying, going somewhere. I mean, if they're saying Luis and, and Cease are on the table. The Eloy is definitely on the table. Yeah. Eloy is. If they're even remotely considering shipping them off, you consider Eloy already gone. Do you think if they do Luis, there's going to be like a sweetener, right? Like somebody they're tired of dealing with. The White Sox. Hmm. Who do they have? Hold on. I got I want to look this up. Do you think what? Kopech is kind of a, a sweetener? Or is he still too young to give up on? Yeah, I mean, who who uh let's see here. He, what even is the, the situation behind the plate for the Astros? I'm drawing a blank right now. Let's pull it up. Astros roster. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, Maldonado. Maldonado, of of course, and then. Diaz, I don't know how much time he's gotten. You think like a grand doll would be like, the sweetener? No, I mean, I don't know how much of a sweetener you'd really need. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's not, it's not, I don't think sweetener is the right word. It's more of not like necessarily take- a sweetener for the Astros. I think it's more alongside of like the, the White Sox getting rid of someone baggage yeah like yeah. they're trying to get rid of baggage in that i gotta see what Kopech has i feel like he's still under control yeah i don't know if i don't i don't know if they get rid of Kopech. oh yeah he's still he's still under control until he's got two more years of arb left I mean, you're either going to trade Cease and Luis and then Mokata, Kopech. maybe? Oh, God, man. Talk about a guy they're tired of. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to trade 
those guys consider Kopech gone, but like if you're not, then Maybe you might like as well hang on to Kopech. I don't know. Rondall, I mean, it kind of adds up there. I kind of get it. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, CJ Crone and Randall Gritchick heading to the Angels. Angels are, if you had any doubts, they're all in. They're making moves. They're trying to show uh, Otani, look, if not this year, we're trying to prove to you that next year would be worth it. So, yeah, I like it. We're trying to prove, around. like, hey, if we're in the hunt, we'll 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 gamble, we'll go get some dudes. I'm just, I there's a lot going on with that lineup, a lot going on with that roster. Like, I understand depth, but just running through like the infield. Fully healthy, Renjifo, run, run Rendon, Eduardo Escobar, Ren and Jury, CJ Krohn, the young shortstop Neto, Mustakis. Oh yeah, I forgot about him. Andrew Velasquez. What's going on here? Wait, what if you you forgot? Um... What's his name? With the Yankees. Uh, come on, dude. <laughs> what? I'm blanking on this guy's name. I can I want, see his I face. I want to watch you struggle. In my mind, I always paired him with Glaber. Gio Urshela. Yeah. He's done for the year. I think he's done for the year. He's on the 60 day, I believe. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah, you were saying everybody fully healthy, that though. I name fully healthy, like with. 10 or 15 day IL within reason. Yeah. Like you will be back eventually. Um, yeah, it's just like, it's, it's a lot going on. The Gritchick move makes sense, made sense to me because you talked about like really well-timed trades. I think they knew this, but Ward getting smacked in the face with a, yeah, with a Manoa fastball or whatever that was, um, that like for that to be immediately go to the 60 day, I think they Might said he had done multiple, for the year. yeah, multiple fractures in his face. So like the the Grichik move made a lot of sense to fill that. The Crone part of it, I'm I'm like, I don't hate it because Crone's got juice. He's been in LA before. Talk about a reunion. So it's just like that. There's a there's a ton going on in this area. In this specifically specifically in the infield and talking about how the DH spot is off limits. Like you're not going to be able to rotate guys into that. I think that's where we're going. I think that's where we're going wrong though, is when you, when you present this conversation with the qualifier of fully healthy, I think the angels credit to them and we've talked about it. Their self, I think their self-awareness has improved drastically over the last couple of years where it's like, okay, we have glaring holes we're not good at long-term contracts. We need to adjust the way we do things. We need to go out and and make moves that make sense for us, both in sure. the short term and the long term. I think they can look at their team, their their roster, and go, "We can't look at this as though there's any hope of being fully healthy in August, in September, and potentially October." So for them to add add a piece that maybe doesn't make sense with you know, overextending your depth. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe for 29 other teams, you are overextending your depth. But I think when it comes to the angels, you're simply just adding depth because left and right guys, there's gotta be like flies. Either these guys are going to get moved or there's going to be something that comes out. Like one of them is done for the year. Drury or Rendon. I think they're going to be done for the year. It has to, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then like Mustakis, do you DFA him? Yeah, that could be coming. But he's not been terrible. 773 OPS this year. Nine home runs. Yeah, but you can get that from 
you can get that from a young guy. You can get that like right. If you get to a point where you're you're not doing anything worth talking about this year, if if you're out of the hunt, then use that spot for somebody else. Get again, add to the add to the conversation that you're having with Shohei of like, hey, these are some of the the guys that are in the mix for next year that we yeah. think can help make a difference. Yeah, it I guess. Just a little confused. Curious to see what happens. Curious to see if they're if they're done or not. I mean, I I would feel kind of greedy if I'm a if I'm an Angels fan looking at the moves that have already been made and they're like yeah, this is good, but like, give me just a little more. Mm-hmm. But if you're the Angels, you're looking around and going, I mean, we we made moves. We didn't sell. We didn't throw in the towel. We didn't let Shohei walk out the door. Possibly another place for Flaherty, too. Yeah. Like a cheap rotation piece. You think, you think Flaherty ends up where are we talking about? L.A.? You yeah. think he ends up there, though? Yeah. it's kind of my feelings. Yeah. Isn't he from that area? Yeah, I think so. I think he's a SoCal guy. Yeah. Interesting. And obviously, when I say L.A., I'm talking Dodgers. But, yeah, I mean, potential landing spot for sure. We'll just see. We'll have to see whether or not they're done. Um Couple others here. Carlos Santana. This was going back into last week. Uh, I think this was shortly after we finished last episode. Uh, Brewers pick up uh, Carlos Santana from the Pirates. It's just the most predictable, underwhelming Brewers trade deadline every year. Every year they go add a bat. Nothing against Carlos Santana, but it's like, You're just doing that to do it. I don't. Are you getting a ton out of that? Is that gonna is that gonna really get put you over the edge? I don't think I don't think we talked about it, but the the whole Rowdy Telez thing with his oh, it was like his toenail or something, or no, his fingernail. I don't know about that. What is that? He apparently tore a fingernail on a chain link fence. All shagging BP. Ooh. Has like a forearm injury as well, I think. So I, they were using this as a way to kind of fill in for that. But like, it's even then, it's not, yeah. it's it's such a brewer's move. Yeah. It's annoying. They annoy me. We know. It's the most we know. lukewarm team of all time. Whatever. There you go. I was wondering what you were doing. Yeah. I'm sitting here, dude. I've already told you I'm not I'm not controlling the soundboard. Don't know where that's coming from. I don't know if that's from like a remote location. Possibly. In the Middle East. I don't know. Possibly. Don't know who's watching us right now, but it's not it is not I. Um lastly here Nikki Lopez. The real takeaway for me for this move is Charlie Culberson DFA'd yet again. This poor man. Nicky Lopez picked up from the Royals in exchange for left-hander Taylor Hearn. Uh, but as I said, Charlie Culberson DFA'd again. I saw a lot of comments talking about, we'll see you in a week, Charlie. I, it's possible. I don't know if he's going to. You never know. He's going to clear waivers. Who knows? But I think safe to say the Charlie Culberson era in Atlanta is uh, that, that that book has been closed. What a brutal way to end it, too. What a brutal just turn of events throughout the whole time. Just a series of events. Just a roller coaster. Uh. 
Nicky Lopez hitting 210 with three triples and 13 ribbies in 67 games for the Royals this year. Uh, that's at the time of the move. Um, he's a career 248 hitter with what? What? He has a career 248 hitter with five home runs and 119 RBIs. Sounds about right. He's averaging a home run a year. Hit my quota. That's all I got. Uh, he can play. He can bounce around in the infield. He can play a little second, play a little bit short. Um, Just wait, dude. Just wait. He'll pop off. He'll have four jacks in the postseason and be yep. a hero. Oh, yeah. That's what they yep. do. It's what they do. I'm trying to see here. Um. Taylor Hearn going to the Royals. Not that anybody really cares, but just just uh, closing out this transaction. Uh, he had one outing with the Braves after his contract was purchased uh, from the Rangers on Monday. Has a 14-7-3 ERA and five outings between the two clubs this year. Yikes. 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 In 93 appearances over the last five seasons, twenty that includes 25 starts, he is 12 and 15 with a 5 2 6. So, hmm. about as a low caliber deal as you can, you yeah. can draw up for these two clubs. But as you said, the I Braves. Think that speaks to our deadline, by the way. It's It's been. Yeah. A little underwhelming. Yeah. Outside of a couple names. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't have much optimism for the next 24 hours either. So, I don't. I don't have a ton either. It's just, it's, it's, I, I could probably, I, I'd probably venture to say that it has nothing. Well, it has little to do with the names that have been made available or like who, you know, like with, with yeah. contracts, who's going to, who's heading to free agency rentals, this and that. And I feel like it has so much more to do with the fact that the league, we've talked about it. The league has been flipped on its head this year. Yeah. Yeah with just teams that are still on the hunt, teams that are already dropped out. Yeah. And looking ahead to 2024. And it's just throwing the whole system off and I think a lot of these teams are still are still reeling from the reality that has either just recently been broken to them or they've known for the last month or so that this just isn't their year and they're trying to pick up the pieces and and figure out the best way to move forward like do we suck now? Should we sell? Should we just chalk this up as a fluke and and prepare ourselves for next season? I don't know if that's the case, but I would think that there's got to be a little bit of a correlation there between the two. 100%. It's got to be. Teams that are still in striking distance. What bugs me is I don't want to see those teams that are in striking distance not do anything. Can you give me an example? Cubs. If you're not going to sell, then you should buy. But if you're going to hold on to Belly, you're going to hold on to Strowman. You can do little moves. You can get sure. little pieces. You don't have to do a bunch of splash, but you can go and it's like I, I don't love when they're like, "Hey, we're going to hold on to these guys because we're doing well, but we're not going to do anything in return. We're not going to add." That part bugs me. Yeah, because I mean, I yeah, yeah, I see it. I can see it both ways, sort of, to where it's like, yes, if you're not going to get rid of those guys and you are going to go in on on a on a run, then just add. Like that's the common yeah. sense answer. But yeah. on the flip side, for a good a good chunk of time here, people have been speculating. Like ahead of this, uh, what was it? Was it eight straight for them? Right yeah. for the Cubs. Yeah. Yeah, they'd won eight straight. Ahead of that, people were wondering, like, oh, like I don't know if the Cubs have if this thing's got the legs, like Cubs are gonna sell, Cubs should sell, Cubs should sell. And you've got these names that have been out there. You got Strowman on the table, you got a guy like Belly on the table. I feel like in your head, if you're the Cubs front office, you've almost just resigned to the fact that you're selling these guys. But then you may you go on this eight game eight game run 
And all of a sudden you're in a position to make a run at this thing. Yeah. And you pull those guys off the table that almost in a weird way that almost has to feel like an ad. Right. Because you, you've been going about this for the last month or so thinking like, yeah, I mean, we've been all been doing all right, but, when rubber hits the road, come they're just come weird the turn with of the this calendar. stuff, dude. Like yeah, well, last I mean, year I agree. with Ian Happ, like the hugs, and then he stays, and it's like I and Contreras as well. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's just it's just odd. I yeah, I'd like to see, but I mean, there's teams that like they need to do something. The Yankees, the Red Sox, the Mariners, the Phillies, the Diamondbacks, the Cubs, the Padres. You're saying in either direction. Just choose. Something Just has go to one way yeah. or the other. Yeah. Do something. I think it's a missed opportunity for... For definitely like the Mariners. I think it's a missed opportunity for the Mariners. To not sell. Yeah. Yeah. Like se- sell. If you feel like you're out of it, you're out of it. But don't just sit here and like hope that something happens. Try to get something for somebody. Phillies. Go get somebody. Go get something. Yep. You need you need a little something. Padres. They're a little weird. Cause like you can sell, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. Like you gotta you still have to have that asking price. Like you can't give up soto for a bag of chips like you you still have to ask for that and if teams aren't willing to give that up then there's only so much you can do they have padres haven't quite caught the steve cohen bug yet where they're they're willing to rip the band-aid off on this season i think they're yeah. still holding out hope especially after sweeping the rangers which god yeah, it's gotta just, feel weird too i just got done we we talked about it i just got done talking about how the padres treat them like the mets and then they just go out and and pull off a series like this. It's yeah. it it just further extends their limbo, which I hate. But yeah. whatever, get out of limbo. Punt or go for it. Choose, but stay out of limbo. I'm projecting my my Yankee <laughs> frustration on the rest of the league, but hey, still, I, I I get it. Uh, you did mention the Red Sox and last thing before we get out of here, I saw that reports about the Red Sox being open to possibly moving for Dugo, which I just think is hilarious because at that point you'll have Connor Wong as the remaining piece of the Mookie Betts deal. Connor Wong. I don't, I don't like it. I don't, I don't think that makes a ton of sense. does not make sense i don't know dude what i mean whatever (laughs) like i know i know mookie came out i think i think it was on his podcast recently where he was talking about like i know nobody wants to believe it but i wanted to spend my career in boston i'll go to my grave not believing that to be the case i dude was just waiting to make it to free agency to collect his bag and he didn't care if it was in boston or elsewhere so I don't need to hear the whole like I wanted to be a Red Sox lifer. No, I don't. I don't need to hear that. However, like, either if you're Boston, ship him out and get something worth like having for years to come, and have it like having something that'll contribute to the overall success of your team, mm-hmm. or just. Pay him what he's asking for to keep him. Even if he doesn't necessarily want to stay here for the rest of his career, show him, give him the money that will convince him otherwise. I'm having flashbacks. (laughs) We've shared a lot of the same experiences over the last few years, I I will say, in that regard. It's true. I don't, I don't know why. Why move him? I don't understand. Do you have any other? I mean, James Paxton, I guess. Yeah. You don't You don't move Bayo. You got to hold on to him. No, no, no. Of course not. I mean, I, I, I will say it's just one series. You, you were able to at least get one, one game this weekend. But I just would have loved. 
I feel like vibes are really high coming into the series with the Giants. I would have loved to seen you come out of there with a series win. I think you've got the Mariners, uh, I believe tonight. Um, I don't know. I just would have loved to have seen that. And that would have felt better about any moves that take place over the next 24 hours. But, I mean, all in all, vibes just are still do high there. something. Just, do yeah, just something. Stay just out of this something. one foot in, one foot out BS. I hate it. I like I said, they they Heim kind of got back into my good graces a little bit with that KK move. You just talk about ripping a band-aid off. Just do what you gotta do to to close that book. And my hope was that you know the dominoes would continue to fall here, but we're we're still waiting to to see if and when they'll do anything. I don't know. We'll see. That's all I got. Did I bring your vibe down a little bit today? No, I'm still. Did I bring I'm, it down. No, I, I'm still in a good place. I, I'm still in a good place. I I watched a lot of baseball this weekend. I, I will admit it's been a while since I've been able to watch that much baseball. So that was that felt good. I feel like the 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 juice is coming back a little bit. So you know, if the Sox go on to do something special this this home stretch, I'm all for it. If not. There's a lot of good storylines around baseball right now that are that'll be worth turning tuning into. Yeah. And I will say, I think baseball fans would agree. Did you see the uh last thing before we get out of here? Did you see the report about this weekend? I think it was was it Saturday? I think it was Saturday. Up like nine percent or something like that. It was like the highest yeah. like uh attendance record of any like Saturday. I don't even remember what the details of it were, but like Vibes are up across baseball for fans, yeah. regardless of who you're following, um, right. just in terms of attendance. So, you know, that's that'll be my closing message for today. If the team you're following is out of it, if your team, if the team that you're following is in limbo right now and you're frustrated with the the lack of commitment one way or another, whether to buy or to sell, Look elsewhere around the league for some for some relief from that because there's a there's a lot we just talked about. It. League's been flipped on its head this year. There's a lot of teams in contention this year that I think will be worth following down the stretch. A uh, lot of good uh, storylines to follow from a player's perspective mm-hmm. in terms of uh, you know just feel good stories or statistical uh, pursuits here. So Give we're in a good me, uh... place. We're in a good place. Before we go, give me one name that you would bet your kidney that they will get moved before the deadline. Doesn't have to be a sexy name. Just a, just a name that you know will not be sticking around. Honestly, I feel like I I know it's a little bias here. We just got done talking about it, but I feel like it's somebody on the Red Sox. I I really think it's either going to be if they're smart, it's either going to be if they're smart, I would move I would move Duvall before I moved Paxton. Because mm-hmm. like I said, if you move Duvall, you give the nod to Jaron Duran who's been playing really well and you clear up a little bit of a log jam that you got out there. You already did it with Kike. You it's got rid of Duvall, that huh? that unnecessary weight ship out the vol and you're in a in my opinion you're in a, a much better spot all right i'm gonna go oh michael lorenzen that's what i'm gonna do there you go I like yeah that. the tigers i mean like look it's either him or erod but erod has a little bit of a bigger, bigger contract i think so sure yeah, I, I would say Lorenzen has looked good all year. Well, since he's been back, he's looked good. Yeah, and like like we were talking about, like we're we're basically down to just like middle to bottom rotation guys uh, as far as availability goes. So yep. I think there's quite a few teams interested in him. I could see him anywhere. L.A., either L.A. You could see him in Houston. Yeah, I can see him yeah. being moved. I like it. That's uh, that's all I got. 
assuming that's all you have, uh, yeah. we will see you guys Thursday. Uh, I don't know what the deal is for this Bleacher Report thing. I don't know where we're going to be, but if that information becomes available, you can catch us tomorrow. It should be around noon, I believe. We're going to be streaming from somewhere. Yeah, on something. On something, somewhere, talking about something. Uh, we'll we'll uh, get that info out to you guys if you're interested. In it's definitely noon, wherever it is. Noon Eastern. In. Noon Eastern. Tomorrow. Um, going over some deals. So we'll see you guys there. But if not, we'll see you guys Thursday. And uh, again, cut us some slack with any deals that happen from now uh, until our next recording. Because here in about 10 seconds, this episode will be over. Yeah, let's get out of here before another before another deal happens. Or let's get out of here so another deal happens. Correct. That's get the ball happen. rolling. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. thank us it, later. Yeah, absolutely. Don't go chasing curveballs. We love y'all and as always, looking forward to talking more baseball with you guys soon. Until next time, stay filthy.